If you're a pre-dental student or even a dental student, I'm sure you've looked up how to get into dental school. But what you might not have looked up is how to get out of dental school in order to actually become a dentist with the license. So if you thought that completing your undergraduate degree, completing all those science classes, taking your DAT, applying to dental school and getting into dental school finally was going to be the hardest thing you ever had to do. It probably is and I kind of still hope it is because that's the step that I'm on and I'm hoping that that is still true, but there are still other steps that you need to take in order to become a licensed dentist. And in this video, I'm going to tell you the six things and the six steps that you need to take in order to get your dental license and practice as a dentist. Step number one is to get accepted into a dental school. So I'm at the step right now. I'm very proud of myself. If you're at this step, I'm very proud of you too, but we still have five more steps to go. So if you're wondering how to get into dental school and all those things, I'll link some other YouTube channels down below, or you can watch some other of my videos where I talk about how to get into dental school. But for now, we're gonna move on to step number two. Step number two is to pass the dental board exam. So by this, I mean NBDE part one and NBDE part two, which stands for National Dental Board Examination Part 1 and National Board Dental Examination Part 2. This is a written exam, a written cognitive a written cognitive exam, not a clinical exam. These are two separate exams that you take on two separate days and you need to pass them in order to get your license. The good thing is that they're on a pass no pass scale versus getting an actual score and you need to receive at least a 75% to pass the exam. So NBDE part one consists of biology, physiology, microbiology, pathology, anatomical sciences, and dental occlusion and dental anatomy. So mostly biological didactic stuff in part one. And that's usually the harder exam, at least for my school, it's the harder exam. That's just what I've heard, but it's a 400 question exam and it also costs $425 to take which is super expensive because then you have to pay again to take part two. This part one and part two exam is going to get phased out at the end of October of this year. So if you're an incoming dental student or if you are a first year dental student, you're going to be taking the integrated national board exam. I'm pretty sure unless you run in there and try to take part one before October and hopefully coronavirus doesn't stop you from doing that because it stopped me twice. Well, so I came here to Culver City to the Prometric Center because I was optimistic and hoping that um, I would still be able to take my board exam because I didn't get an email saying it was canceled. So luckily for you incoming dental students or dental students that are first years right now, you guys will be taking the integrated board exam, which will combine part one and part two into one exam. So instead of it being two separate 400 question exams, it's just going to be one combined 500 question exam, but it's going to be more of a clinically based exam mixed in with the anatomical biological sciences. So nobody has taken this exam. Nobody really knows what it's going to be like because the first exam is going to be offered August of this year, hopefully coronavirus doesn't stop them. Step number three is graduating from dental school and getting your diploma. So this means passing all of your written examinations, passing all of your time practical exams, passing all of your clinical exams, all your OSCEs, basically four years of your life, sometimes three if you go to UOP. But doing this is not easy and it takes a lot of hard work and studying. But you get a diploma which is one of the things that you need in order to get your dental license. This also means that you might have to remediate classes if you didn't pass them, because in order to pass dental school and get your diploma, you have to pass all of your classes. You can't get a D in a class. If you get a D in a class, they make you take the test again so you get at least a C in the class. But you know what they say about dental students who graduate with Cs? They're still called dentists. Step number four is to pass your state board exam. So this is a live clinically based, patient based exam that you have to pass in order to get your dental license. 
there are different exams uh, because this exam is based on your state. So in the state of California, most people take the REB exam, which stands for Western Regional Examination Board. But if you're from a different state, there are a ton of different other exams that you can take. And yes, this means that if you get your dental license in the state of California, you can't just practice anywhere. You have to have a dental license for that specific state. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I was reading through the REBS candidate guide and it seems like portions of this exam include operative dentistry, endodontics, periodontal treatment, and prosthodontics. I'm not completely sure if you only do the endo part, if you want to be an endodontist or things like that. I'm pretty sure you have to do all four parts, but these are live exams, which means that you need a patient, a live patient, and you work on them which is kind of unethical and they're trying to change that. But for now, this is how the REB exam is. Now, there are some ways around this. For example, if you do a one year residency, you can get your licensure without having to take the state board exam in some states. I believe only some states do that. Step up number five is to apply to a residency program if you choose to specialize. So some specialties include orthodontics, pediatrics, prosthodontics, endodontics, dental anesthesiology. There's so many more dental residency programs that you can go into if you choose you want to specialize. Now these are mostly two year residencies unless you want to do oral surgery, which is six years, but then you also get your MD, your medical doctorate degree along with it but you don't have to do a residency program if you just wanna become a general dentist, but you can do a general practice residency as well, which is just a one year general practice residency in order to just become a general practice dentist. Now, reasons why you would want to do this is if you don't wanna take your state board exam, you can do this general practice residency and then you can get your license at the end of it and skip the whole REB exam process. Or if you wanna take your rub exam and don't want to do a one year general practice residency, you can just get started on the rest of your life as a dentist. Step number six, now you're finally a licensed dentist and you can finally practice and have a dental practice or work for a corporation or work for the military or do whatever you want. You can finally practice as a dentist, but are you done with school yet? Kind of, but not really, because you have to take continuing education courses for the rest of your life in order to keep your dental license. So you'll have to renew your dental license and you have to get a certain amount of credits, of continuing education credits, in order to renew your license. So basically, if you wanna be a dentist, you have to go to school for the rest of your life and you have to be willing to be a lifelong learner because it doesn't even end after dental school. But if you decide that you no longer want to keep learning, then you can retire. I hope this video was able to give some of you guys perspective on how much dentists actually study and what it really takes to become a licensed dental professional. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. All right, I hope to see you guys soon.